So, there are a few things that it is our desire to help you reconfirm within yourself today. First, it would be nice if you could accept the existence of this vortex of creation. And it would be even nicer if you could see it as we see it, as your present tense of creation. So that when your friend says to you, I don't see any improvement in your life, you can stand firmly inside your vortex of creation and say, that's because it's not visible to those who are outside the vortex. <laughs> and they will say, have you seen a doctor lately? <laughs> and you will say there are no doctors in the vortex of creation. When you let being in this vortex, when you let tuning yourself into the vibrational frequency of all that you are be your top priority, you get so much life back. Do you know how many arguments, how many words, how many efforts, how much action is necessary just to keep you alive and out of desperation when you're not in the vortex? In other words, it's a big effort to live this life when you're counting on your words and your action and your effort to make it happen. It's interesting, you could just have a conversation with one very well-meaning mother about her child that she adores more than life itself and listen to all of the gyrations that she is going through in order to sort of kind of understand what's going on with her little boy and put it in the proper perspective when really all she needs to do is step away from whatever's bothering him and away from whatever's bothering her and focus upon something that gives her access to the vortex and from inside the vortex everything's clear. You cannot lead from behind. And if you are not in the vortex, then you have nothing to give anyone. Sometimes people say, Abraham, it seems like you teach selfishness. And we say, we really, 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 really do. Because selfishness, let's define it. Selfishness means vibrational alignment with self. And in order to understand that, you've got to know who self really is. Self is source. Self is pure positive energy. Self is worthy. Self is clear-minded. Self is healthy. Self is full of vitality. Self is eager about life. And when you are willing to be selfish, which means you are willing to mimic the vibration of self, which means you're willing to release the thoughts that hold you apart from that and practice the thoughts that cause you alignment with that, which simply means you're selfish enough to care how you feel. That's when they call it selfish. People say, oh, you're so selfish. You're pleasing you. And what they mean is, you should please me. You're selfish because you please you, and I'm not selfish because I think you should please me instead of you. There's some screwy reasoning going on. And every time it matters to you to please them instead of you, oh, it's such short-term gain. Such short-term gain. Because... When you care about how someone else feels or how they are responding to you, so you behave in order to affect their response to you, you do them a very big disservice because you teach them that through action and demand or control or control or power that they can wrestle their life to the ground. And there's hardly going to be anybody as cooperative as you. Think about it. Have you ever had someone who was so cooperative that just do anything for you? And then they were the only one who would behave that way? So you just had that one friend? <laughs> Often it was your mother? You weren't really ready for the world, were you? But when you show yourself that you have the power to come into alignment, not just with who you were before you were born, but with all that you've become ever since. Not just with you and all you've become, but with Source itself. When you show yourself that by being selfish, which means by reaching for the best feeling thought you can find on whatever subject is active, when you care about being in the vortex, you care about being in concert with the energy that creates worlds. 
And one who's in the vortex, one who's in alignment with that energy, is more powerful than millions who are not. It's such an interesting thing to watch what goes on in your planet because you are so good at step one. Most of you have made such a career out of step one. You sift through the data and you know what you don't want and you know what you do want and you know what you don't want and you know what you do want and you know what you don't want and you know what you do want and you know what you don't want and you know what you do want and you know what you don't want and you know what you do want. And sources over here, knowing what you want, being what you want, sending out a signal of what you want. Law of attractions over here, gathering what you want, gathering what you want, gathering what you want, gathering what you want. You're over here. That's creating by default. That's going where the wind blows. That's complaining about whatever they're complaining about and feeling about whatever's happening. But when you decide that you're going to take control of your relationship to who you really are, when you decide that you're going to tend to this gap between you, wherever you are on whatever subject you're experiencing, and who you really are and what you know about the same, now life is going to take a new form and shape for you. You're going to feel exhilarated. You're going to feel satisfaction. Those who are watching you will see you as someone who seems to create tremendously with ease. Those who are watching you, especially those who don't really understand the power of this vortex and the power of your deliberate alignment with it, they'll call you lucky. Many times they'll be jealous of you. Because they'll watch your fortunes amass and your fun surround you and they'll watch you in satisfying life experience. And when they say to you, what do you know that I don't know? The only thing that you can say to them that is of any real value to them is, I figured out my relationship with me and I'm constantly aware of my vibrational relationship to who I really am and what I really want. And I guide every thought I can to mesh with the wholeness that I am. I've become a deliberate thinker. I no longer create by default. I think on purpose. I speak on purpose. I act on purpose. And I don't do any of it unless I'm in the vortex. What do you mean? What's a vortex? What do you mean? What is, what is a vortex? A vortex is a vibrational state of being that is the precursor of all positive motion forward, of all that is. It's like encapsulated, condensed, straight up source. It's pure positive energy. It's the holding tank. It's the anchor. It's the touchstone. It's the place where all dreams and wishes and hopes are held until we find vibrational alignment with it. It's the eternal pool of well-being to which each of us have added mightily along the path of our physical experience. So this vortex, it is a reality even though you can't see it, but you can feel it. You know how your dog hears things you can't hear? and smells things you don't want to smell <laughs> because your dog has more acute sensitivity to sound than you do. Sound is just vibration and hearing is just translating it. Smelling is just translating vibration. This vortex is something that while you can't see it and while you may not be able to hear it, when you get in the vicinity of it, you can feel the deliciousness of it. And when you are far from it, you can feel the discord of not being close to it. Do you know that everything you feel all day, every day, is nothing more than feedback about your proximity to your vortex. So when you feel really ornery, you're vibrationally speaking not near your vortex. When you feel hopeful, you're right on the brink of it. In fact, this door to the vortex, this imaginary door in Abraham's fairy tale of the vortex, this vibrational entry point is somewhere between hope and belief. So when you feel hopeful about something, you're so in the vicinity 
that you'll be called in. You'll be swept in. Law of attraction will take you in. Law of attraction will take you in when there is not enough resistance to hold you out. How's that? If you weren't doing that thing you do that holds you apart from your vortex, your vortex would take you in every time. When you slumber, in you go. But you wake up right where you were when you went in. If you go to sleep in the vortex, you wake up in the vortex. If you go to sleep not in the vortex, you wake up not in the vortex. You ever had an experience where you're ornery when you go to sleep? You sleep all night, you sleep pretty good, you wake up, still ornery. So the vortex is the source of well-being calling you home, so to speak, calling you to all that you've created. And when you are not clinging with resistance to some thought that keeps you from it, it takes you right in. So really, when we say we want you to get into the vortex, what we really mean, a much more accurate way of saying it is, we want you to stop doing that thing you do that keeps the vortex from taking you in easily. Oh, you're going, you're just not going willingly sometimes. In other words, when you croak, in you go. So wonderful to watch you die. moving immediately into all that you have become, all that you've asked for. But we don't think you should have to croak in order to be in the vortex. We don't think you should have to croak in order to be what life has caused you to be. So, as we're moving forward today, we're eager to talk with you about whatever it is you want to talk about. And it is our desire to help you to find a vibrational stance, which means a mental approach, which means an attitude about whatever it is that you've got going on. We want to help you soften your resistance because when you soften resistance, the vortex takes you in. And that really is where you belong. You belong inside that vortex where rendezvous with exhilarating things can happen all day, every day. Do you know that if this time-space reality has the wherewithal to stimulate a desire so that the desire is in present tense already gathered in this vortex of creation that this time space reality has the wherewithal to give it to you now and the only reason there is a gap between you putting it in the vortex and it showing up where you and others can see it and smell it and hear it and taste it and touch it is because you've got more resistance about the subject going on than you do belief or expectation about the subject that's all you just got to move yourself into more expectation. So what do you want to talk about?